Hello there. Hello there. As you can see, I'm outside again today in my garden. And can you see just up here? There we are. There's a roof. And that reminds me of one day when Eric the Elf had a bit of a problem with his roof. So, he was fast asleep, all warm and cosy in his bed, having a delightful dream about breakfast. He was dreaming of grilled mushrooms, and crusty bread, and acorn coffee. And then a strange thing happened. The coffee spilt all of its own accord, and somehow fell on his nose. And it was cold. And it kept happening. Drip, 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 cold coffee all over his nose. He woke up for the start. My goodness me, he thought. My face is all wet. And my pillow's all wet. Earth is going on. I think I'd better get up. It was just getting light. And he thought, I'll just throw open my curtains and see what's happening. And then he realised, why, it was already light in his bedroom. Well, how could that be? The curtains were still drawn. The light was out. He looked up. The sun was streaming past the last of some big dark rain clouds through a big hole in his roof. He looked up at his roof and he could see round the big hole there were just a few little wisps of straw left of his thatched roof. Well, 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 thought Eric. This is a poor to do. I'll move my bed from under the hole. So he did that. And I'll take my sheets and my pillow outside the garden and get them nice and dry. But before that, he remembered the lovely dream, so he went and treated himself to a very nice breakfast of grilled mushrooms and crusty bread and acorn coffee. He felt much better after that, and he strolled out into his garden with great purpose, and he set out his sheets and his pillow to dry nicely on his little washing line. And then he turned and he looked up at his cottage and he looked up at his roof and he thought to himself, oh dear, how on earth am I going to get up there to mend my roof? For although Eric's cottage was not a large one, quite a small cottage, Eric himself was also quite small, quite small even for an elf. Oh dear me, he thought, how can I get up there? If only I could fly. Oh, I'd be up there in no time. I'd get that sorted in a jiffy. But I can't fly. But Griselda the fairy can fly. Of course, Griselda. I'll go have a word with her. I'm sure she'd be happy to help. So. Eric took himself off down the path through the forest, all the way to Griselda's house. And there it was, nestling in the roots of an old pine tree, for she loved the smell of pine. And just as he was about to knock on the door, he saw there was little gnosis on it. Joyful greetings from Griselda, it said. I have gone on holiday, and I will not be back until Midsummer's Day. Have a delightful day. Griselda. Oh dear, thought Eric. Hmm. Griselda's the only fairy round here who could fly up to my roof and fix it. Oh, what am I going to do? So, he trudged back through the forest rather less of a spring in his step now, and the journey seemed far longer than it had before. And he lamented his short stature and his little legs, but eventually he made his way to his cottage. And who should he find there 
sitting atop his garden gate, but old Mr. Crow. All right there, all right there, Eric, said Mr. Crow. I don't know if you noticed, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a big hole in your roof. Big hole! Uh, yes, yes, said Eric. I, I, I had rather noticed that. Ah, well, said Mr. Crow. That's because there's some storks moved into the north of the forest. Uh, I'm sorry, said Eric. I, why, why do storks mean I've got a hole in my roof? Ah, well, now you see, said Mr. Blackbird. Mrs. Stork, well, she's a bit short-sighted, see. And she swooped down, thinking as how your cottage roof was a little haystack. And she took herself a great big beak full of straw to go and line their new nest. Oh, tis a lovely nest. They've got themselves well set up there to the north of the forest they have. Oh, I, I'm so pleased, said Eric. Well, now, the thing is, with a big hole in your roof, all the rain's going to get in. All the rain's going to get in. So me and all the other friends of the feathered variety have, have all clubbed together and, well, we've brought bits of straw and bits of twig and, oh, a few leaves and, you know, what not else. And, well, we've mended your roof for you. I think it'll hold up even better than it would before. Eric looked beyond Mr. Crow and saw to his amazement, why, yes, his roof had been completely fixed. Oh, my goodness me. Why, oh, thank you so much, said Eric. I don't know how I'm ever going to repay you for this, this wonderful kindness. Oh, don't you mind about that, said Mr. Blackbird. Why, me and my other feathered friends, why, for many a week now, we've been wondering how we're ever going to repay you for all the kindness that you've shown us. Whenever you leave out a little dish of water when it's cold and icy, whenever you throw out a few pieces of bread, whenever you leave a few extra seeds when you're sowing seeds in your garden, why, we always think to ourselves, what a fine chap that Eric is. So we're only too pleased to have been able to help you. Well, said Eric, that is kind indeed. Thank you so much, Mr. Blackbird. And he popped back into his cottage, and that night slept the coziest, most wonderful, peaceful sleep he could ever remember. Safe from the rain which pounded down outside his window and didn't even make him turn over once. <laughs>